guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm just gonna be working on a bunch of maintenance out here in the garden. And it's actually something I really enjoy doing because it gives me a chance to slow down. I can really look over every area and kind of dream of what I want that spot to look like in the end so I can decide if I need to move anything around or add something in eventually. It also gives me a chance to inspect every individual plant so I can spot any problems that are going on. And I know I'm dealing with some insect issues um, here and there around the garden right now. And I did have big plans at the beginning of this day of how many things I wanted to plant. But as I was doing all of my watering this morning, I realized just how much maintenance that needs to be done. So today I'm gonna to be cutting back perennials, deadheading things, weeding, trimming up trees, and probably running some drip. So I'm gonna start right here in front of the house, and this is where I always start. And then I kind of just move my way around systematically, going one bed at a time. Um, and it just helps to take kind of a systematic approach and kind of almost um, divide up the yard into sections. And then it makes me feel like I can put a check mark by each section and it makes me feel better about myself and how much work I still have left to do. Let me show you all the tools I carry around for these types of jobs. First of all, I've got my lawn tractor with the trailer attached, which has been one of the best things that we purchased for this garden. It saves me about a million steps. I've got my pole pruners today, which I don't usually carry around every time, but I know I've got some low limbs that I need to take care of. These are the best pole pruners I have ever used right here. Um, I've got my blower here, which I use kind of as a rake and then a cleanup tool. I've got a kneeling pad. This is like the kneeling pad of all kneeling pads. It's super thick. I think the brand is Earth Edge. I don't know, it's pretty nice. I've got my Felcos. I've also got my hose end sprayer here, which I've already filled the hopper with this right here. This is a fungicide, insecticide, and miticide. So I'll be waiting until this evening to spray this. I'll be waiting till all the honeybees are in for the evening, but I've got it ready to roll. And then I've also got my kangaroo pop-up bag. And I don't actually know how the filming of this is going to go because I've never really done, like attempted to do a video where I show a ton of different things, which I'm hoping to make it through a lot of the garden. And I don't have like a ton to do in every single section. So I'll try to stop between sections and explain the area and explain what I'm doing. Um, and there are some things that look pretty rough right now. Like a lot of our perennials are right in between bloom cycles. So they need to be cut back. Roses are in between, so I need to deadhead those. It's just kind of like a lull in the garden right now, except for our annuals. Our annuals are awesome and that's why I plant them. So right here in front of the house, the limelight hydrangeas are looking awesome and they're full of buds. Gomfrina is great, so are all the annuals up here. We had a windstorm come through last night and the night before, so I need to blow off all the sidewalks. But you can see this honey locust tree. We've got a really low branch that I wanna take care of, probably a couple of them actually, because I can't even walk under this one without hitting my head, so you know Aaron's hitting his. So we need to take care of that. Also, um, in this flower bed in front of me, I was doing some watering this morning, but I need to cut back the hardy geraniums. They're pretty much done and looking pretty, I don't know, pretty rough. Um, and then I'm gonna be doing some deadheading of roses in here, cutting back yarrow. Um, what else? Oh, and if we go beyond this lilac here, you can see I'm gonna cut some of the lilac branches out. See, that one's not looking so hot. I keep hitting my head on this one right here. Uh, and then I'll be cutting back some things in this flower bed. Isn't this flower bed beautiful? It's just so full um, and lush looking. I planted some lettuce in here earlier this season and cabbage just for some interest early on while I was waiting for all the other perennials to do their thing. So I can pull those out and give them to the chickens. I've got red valerian right here that I'm gonna cut back. Oh, what else in here? I've got roses in the back to dead head more lettuce right here that's bolted for the chickens. And I do have Virginia creeper. So this is a vine that's actually climbed up the lilac and it looks absolutely gorgeous in the fall. And I've let it kind of do its thing along the floor of this flower bed because one, it's a great filler and then it gets that beautiful red in the fall. So it's a really interesting look. However, it has grown onto this bench, like it's growing through all of the grid. I'll probably clean that up a little bit so that you can actually see the bench again. Here's the lemon balm. I planted in a vlog really early this spring and it's doing great. I'll probably cut that back maybe by half. And then I'll remove the cabbage here that's a little bit eaten. I planted some AHA hydrangeas that are doing really great. They do have some hail damage from early on, as do these hostas. But I think this area, once these hostas fill in, these get like four feet, no, three and a half feet wide. Um, they're called Diamond Lake. I planted three of them and then three AHAs around this tree where I planted coleus last year and I'm just loving it. I think it's gonna be beautiful 
especially once we give these hostas another year where we're not looking at all this hail damage. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is start with the big tree branches and then I will just try to set the camera up near whatever I'm doing so that you guys can see what it is that I'm doing. <laughs> pretty good sized branches and now I'm just going through and cleaning up some dead stuff and scraggly growth you can really see a lot when you look uh, from underneath the canopy and just look up I'm finding you know some dead branches here and there that I want to get cleaned out of there it always feels good to me to clean up trees like this even if I'm taking out some kind of bigger branches because it allows so much more light and airflow through the tree that the trees are usually much happier and healthier for it um, and they usually end up a better shape and the things around them are happier as well like the Japanese maple that the big locust branch was shrouding in the front flower bed here it'll get a lot more light so it'll probably put on more growth and be a better color as well and that Japanese maple could stand to put on some more growth especially on this side and oh my word I think we're having a little bit of an issue in this container this one is set up on drip and it looks like it's not draining <laughs> definitely not draining this boxwood has been in this pot for a lot of years I think it would actually be happier if I took it out so maybe we'll tackle this job today too. get the drainage working again and pot it up with something better looking but first I'm gonna finish trimming up this tree and all the other stuff in this area This tree is proving to be much more difficult than I thought. There's a ton of dead in it. So I think I'm gonna actually have to go get a ladder so that I can reach some of these branches. Some of them are so flexible that it's hard to even saw with the pole pruner. So I need to get up closer to them to where I can hold onto the branch and saw at the same time. So the only branches that I really have left on the locust to take out are ones that are kind of growing into this lilac canopy. But I did run back to the barn and I grabbed our reciprocating saw because I started with a handsaw and it's just gonna take me forever because these branches are just so old and they're so hard. So anyway, that's where we're at. This one actually makes me a little bit sad to trim just because it's such an old lilac and I really do like the structure of it, but you can see what the end of these branches look like. I mean, dead leaves and or dying or really, really thin. Um, you can see the underside of that one right there. And if you follow this one back, you can see what the issue is. They're starting to crack and break. So it's just best if I get these old ones out and let the fresh growth kind of take over. channeling my inner Aaron because I intended on cutting one branch out of the locust tree today and then moving on with the rest of my stuff and now I have a huge pile of limbs in my yard look at this you guys <laughs> I just didn't realize I don't think how much needed to be done out here but what I ended up doing because the locust tree was growing right down into the lilac I kind of cut all of those branches up I cut out as much dead as I could reach. There's really not that much more. I see a little bit up here, but I can't reach that. So that'll have to be maybe when the next time we have the arborist come out, maybe he can take care of that. And then I did cut the one branch that was coming this way. And then there was one that was taking off straight up kind of over the house right there. Um, so I took care of that one. And then I took after the lilac. And I know I need to cut more out of this, but I just, don't have the stomach to do it today. <laughs> I mean, I cut some really big branches and I really, really do love this old lilac. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it how it is right now. I did cut back the geraniums. See how they already had their new growth? So those will take off and fill in and um, bloom beautifully, but all of their old growth had kind of flopped over and it was over the grass right here. So this will need to be mowed and then probably re-edged. 
Um, I th popped a couple of petunias out. There was just, it was so thick up here that it was just the perfect haven for insects. I cut some really scraggly lilac branches out from here so it did create kind of a canopy and it opened this area up so I could probably plant it in there. The nine bark that I planted up here is doing really well. That's a ginger wine. I just planted it because we needed a little red up here. Let me swing to the other side. Now I haven't cleaned up anything in this bed yet but I left this big stump and I'll probably cut it out um, but there was some live growth on it that I thought I would just see what happened but I don't know, I think that that looks kind of bad. I'll probably take that one out. So clearly I'm not gonna get as much done today as I thought I was going to, although it's really good to get this kind of stuff done. It feels good, it makes the garden look better, um, but it's just kind of like how every single garden project goes. Like I'm famous for saying to Erin, like this is only gonna take me like 10 minutes. I'll just run out there real quick and get it done. Like an hour later, maybe I'm wrapping up the project. So I'm actually going to head down to the garden center now and pick up a trailer that has some sides on it so we can load all of these branches up because we don't have a proper area to dispose of this many branches. So I'll probably take them out to my parents' compost pile. Um, they will fit out there much better in their pasture than anywhere we have here. So I think I might take the opportunity to go grab a coffee with my mom too. Why not? I need a like treat after this. <laughs> you going to be sass about the car? <laughs> Won't stay like this for long. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I just got our truck detailed yesterday. I could have grown some plants in here. Always. <laughs> I'm not buying you coffee. What is with my hair? Hey, you have to check my phone. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, so click on the video that you sent. It's because I'm holding it. I swear it's because I'm holding it. There. Oh. We haven't even left the parking lot and a truck full of plants arrived. What'd you order? It's uh, candy for us. Everything. 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 Like shrubs and perennials and... It, well, yeah, look at... Do you happen to have eight giant Corinthian lindens in that truck? <laughs> you found oh, it's just a couple <laughs> pallets. Oh, we'll have to go look. I see some white cans. Yes. Yay! Thank you. Thank you very much. Got our coffee, so now we're going to head back and check out the plants. So I'm going to attempt to back this truck into a really tight little space to get the trailer. You can do it. I don't think you've ever done it before. No, you can do it. Simple. Simple. <laughs> Better roll down your window, Laura, so I can yell at you if you get too close. No, you're going to hit this pallet right here. Yeah, just wheel it other way. Okay, now straighten it out. A little bit more that way. Can you go a little bit more that way? Uh, no, you won't. Okay, I think we can just pull it over. Here, you, oh, you for take crying this. out loud. Take this. Okay. Here, um, I can. Ba I'll back it up. Let me back it up. Well, <laughs> I should probably practice. Well, yeah. Nanner, Nanner, this is exactly where I had it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> makes me feel better about myself a little bit. Tiny bit more back. That's pretty close. I think we can handle that, maybe. First try. You don't want to back up a little more? You want me to back it? Oh, mercy, mom. Oh, look at that. And Good thing your go. fingers weren't in the way. <laughs> Lose the digits. Yeah. How am I supposed to get this thing out of here? Oh, I can help you. So, are you going to pull it this way and then back it out? I pull it that way. That way? She's going to take the trailer up over that pallet. <laughs> Are you stoving up because I'm filming it? <laughs> Looking good. Just make sure not to hit that silver car. Yeah, if you just keep going straight back. Uh, no, wrong way. Can you straighten up just a little bit? That's perfect. Now stay at that exact trajectory. <laughs> I can talk big because I'm standing out here drinking my coffee. <laughs> nope, nope, wrong. Sorry, sorry. Wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's not at all swinging it wide. I want to try. Okay. I want to try. I have a better idea. Let's go get water. No. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to back it up a little bit. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think, I think you're fine. You're good. <laughs> well, you're, you're filming yourself. 
Look at all of these pretty plants, you guys. This is what was just arriving as we were taking off. How fun. Ooh, that's a pretty coleus. Salvia coreopsis, galardias, little dianthus. Ooh, I like this echinacea too, with the big ol' oh, that yeah, neat. What is that called? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's called double scoop lemon cream. Looks like a double scoop. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> like right How fun. I made it back home with the trailer. Uh, it was quite the adventure getting that out of its tight little spot down at the garden center. But now I'm going to attempt to move all of these branches and get them to fit in the trailer. Got the trailer all loaded up. So now I want to go back through this bed and kind of refine it a little bit. I want to get my straight edge shovel and clean up that edge. I need to clean up the grass, cut back some perennials, and remove the bolted lettuce. I'm also going to remove some of the most damaged leaves from that hailstorm um, because, you know, these aren't going to repair themselves. They'll just look like this the whole season. And I think it's early enough yet if I remove these, the plant will have more energy to send into new growth instead of trying to keep these old crummy ones alive. Much smaller than when I started, but all of these are pretty nice looking leaves and it just freshens up the plant a bit. I've got grass growing into the flower beds into my sweet woodruff, so I have to hand pull all of that out. I'm not done quite yet, but I did clear out some of the perennials and the lettuce and cabbage that I wanted to be removed. The rest of the cabbage, there's three of them that I'm gonna leave in here because they still look pretty good. They're not eaten very bad. I need to bait around the bottom of them, but I do like the texture that they're adding to this area. So before I finish, I'm gonna go give the chickens this bag full of goodies before they wilt. red valerian down pretty much all the way and it'll flush back yet this season and I did the same thing with the lemon balm over here I was gonna just cut it back by half but I thought you know what um, this area is pretty full I kind of wanted to cut it all the way back so that when it grows back it won't be so big um, and then I did clean the area around the bench there is a northern sea oats grass growing right in front of the bench which is not ideal um, so I may move that later on and then I cut back a which I'm totally shading it But I cut back a daylily that was not looking super hot. So I'll probably go get some plantone and Give it a kind of a midsummer boost of fertilizer so that it comes back and blooms for me this year So now I've got some delphiniums some spent delphinium seed heads um, that will I'll cut all the way back They've already released their seed most of it. There's some more coming but They've already released quite a bit, so I'm just going to clean these up. They're going to be actually a lot happier now that all the red valerian's gone, and they'll get a little bit more sun. Um, so you can see like right here, there's a new delphinium stalk that looks beautiful with these yellow lilies. But I don't know how much detail you guys can see, but can you see the shininess? It's like a sticky shiny on the foliage, which usually means there's aphids nearby. In fact, do I see one? Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. Aphid. So this will be one of the areas, ooh, and there's some sort of egg presence. 
squish those, that can't be good. This will be one of the areas I spray with the Rose RX later tonight after the bees go to bed. So right behind me, there's another little grouping of delphiniums that I'll clean up. Uh, and then, like down in here, there's some pink Veronica blooming. I'm, I'll probably cut back that dried out looking del uh, daylily there. But other than that, in terms of cutting back, I think I'm pretty much done with this area, other than I may cut a couple more branches of this lilac because see, that one looks weird from this angle. I can't leave that big old stump out there like that. And then I'll go get the step edger to clean up the grass on the other side. And all the while I'm finding like huge weeds that are just sneaking around in here. I don't deal with a lot of little weeds because this bed in particular is so full of perennials. It kind of acts as like their own weed suppressant. Um, except for these Chinese lettuce, they grow up super tall and they like mask themselves in plants to where I don't really see them until they're like two feet tall at least. Okay, so now for the cleanup portion, I have my step edger, which I kind of want to work on these lines a little bit anyway. They got kind of off at some point, um, and they're not super smooth. And then the rake, I will take over all the areas that I can get to in there, and then, of course, the grass. guys what do you think so much better right having that clean edge on the grass with a little bit of fresh mulch toward the front and you'll see I didn't put fresh mulch all the way back because this is still good from this spring all I did was I put mulch where I edged the grass and kind of scattered it back and it'll fade pretty quickly to match the rest of the mulch and I didn't really want to waste any I only used three bags for this entire area and you can see right here where the lemon balm was, all cut back, and so it'll flush back here pretty quick. We've got sweet woodruff right there. I just kind of cleaned the edge a little bit. I left that cabbage because I thought it was pretty and I thought it would look kind of empty to not have it there. But there's some tucrium and then of course a red valerian that'll fill back in. Um, I cleaned up quite a bit of the Virginia creeper just from the edge here. I didn't on the whole thing. I mean, I guess I could, but um, this area back in here is looking fresh. I love it. I love all of the green color and texture in there. Um, but I do think that that purple fountain grass was actually kind of necessary. I didn't do that there last year. Um, and I just felt like I was missing something. And this is pretty fun, you guys. I hung this up here last year. But look at, I was just noticing that the leaf cutter bees are using it. See the little ones that are full? It's exciting. I hit my head on this about three times today, though. And then here's the lilac. This is where I left it because I just couldn't stomach cutting any more out. It does look a little bit better though. Like a lot of those scraggly branches that were right up in here are gone. And there is so much Virginia creeper vine that I was able to kind of pull it up off the ground and prop it on the two great big stumps that I had left. So that was one of the cuts today. And that was one of the other ones. But when you stand back, you can't really tell, which is kind of amazing. And then swinging to the other side, sorry for the lighting, you guys. It's a beautiful day though. I took quite a bit of the grass from this edge right here because it just, the shape was horrible and the geraniums had grown so far over the existing grass that it was all mangy right there. And then right back in here where I cut that lilac out, I didn't put any mulch there because I'm thinking I might come in here and plant something. Maybe kind of clean some of these hollyhocks out eventually. They're still like some of them that got really tall are blooming right now and looking beautiful. So as soon as I cut those back, I can kind of decide what I want to do with this little area here. And there's the trailer. I cannot believe that my little tree trimming project turned into that. Here's another quick look at the front. Now that it's shaded a little bit, it's easier to see detail. But I think these limelight hydrangeas and this Japanese maple are going to be so much happier not having that giant locust branch kind of right on top of them. And you guys, I did take the boxwood out and it was so stinky and so rotten that I did toss it. Look inside this pot. I haven't attempted to fix the drain hole yet, but I'm going to do that tonight because this is mosquito breeding ground right there. Hey, Benjamin. What are you doing? Did you get some mosquito bites? 
they look they're looking a lot better going right for the ladder huh you're such a boy <laughs> all right guys so i think that's where i'm going to end this video i honestly thought i would get a lot more done today and i did but i just didn't move very far in the yard um this turned into kind of a monster project but i'm really happy with the results and i feel like it's kind of buttoned up for the rest of the summer like i could come in and fill in some of the bare spots with something if i wanted to um but it just looks nice to have mulch there as well and everything that i cut back will grow and fill back in probably pretty quickly so anyway I think the rest of this week I'm just gonna kind of steadily hopefully a little bit faster move through the rest of the garden so I hope this video was helpful or maybe inspiring or motivating to get out and do something in your own yard so anyway thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.